Bear by Tim Hawkinson. Teddy bears are marvelous toys that we grew up loving since the day we are born. They are cute, beautiful creatures that are not only toys, but our best friend growing up. They make us feel safe and good when hugging them. It sometimes feels like we are sleeping with our best friend. Even older people are so in love with teddy bears. They are giving out us gifts of love and joy. There are different types of bears you can choose from, different sizes and different material that will catch your loved one off guard. Now for the artwork I chose, it's called Bear by Tim Hawkinson. The size of the bear is around 23 feet high with a total weight of 180 tons. The bear is currently sitting in the academic courtyard formed by three signature engineering buildings. The creation was completed in 2005. It has a total of 8 boulders, 27 inch steel pins that hold the body together. It took a year and a half to find all the rocks. It took about 60 miles to transfer the bear, the bear parts causing the closing of some streets. They used cranes as their equipment. You can clearly see the implied lines of the bear. The bear's head is tilted and looking downward. The head is tilted from left to right. There are also outlines of the rocks that help create the figure of the bear. Also, it's a good representation of scale. The scale between a huge bear and a small toy. Tim Hawkinson is an American artist mostly known as a sculptor. Tim was born in San Francisco, California in 1960. He is a graduate of San Jose State University. Tim Hawkinson is very well known for his abstracted, unique ideas. His creations are meditations on nature, machines, mortality, and body. He is loved by many because he can really think outside the box. Now we hear from Tim himself how he comes up with his unique ideas. And um, so, some of these enormous boulders that were weathered and rounded corners, um, they started suggesting these kind of stuffed animal shapes to me. And mm -hmm. I guess um, that's the way I get a number of my ideas, just through visual um, information. Gather, just looking around just and draw, getting stuck in traffic or mm -hmm. um, misreading um, a, a visual event and uh, kind of the misinterpretation becomes more of an, a more interesting kind of idea than the actual event mm -hmm. um, yeah. so when you looked around you, you, you were you thinking well I wonder where I could do this idea or were you thinking oh gosh I wonder what kinds of ideas might spring from just looking around with a completely open mind. I guess it was, I mean, everything I was coming up with was more or less on the monolithic kind of mm -hmm. side of things. And um, there are also, there are a number of other um, rock pieces in the collection. And I, I thought this idea really resonated nicely with, with that. And then um, the, when the engineering, um, when the, they started building the, the Jacobs, what do you call it? The J well, that, that portion of the Jacobs School, which is, it's currently called the Academic Court, and it's That's surrounded the by court. three new buildings, only one of which was, well, even that building was barely coming out of the ground, I think, when we looked at that space. Right, but it, it seemed like that area would be uh, a, an ideal situation for this more kind of organic object uh -huh. to play off of the... To play off, off of, of these... The, the, these modern... Buildings. These very modern buildings. Mm -hmm. It just seemed like a tremendously good idea to mm. me. The way it all came down was a good moment for Tim and his crew. That's probably one of their highlights out of the whole project besides the outcome. Tim used small rocks from his backyard to create a model of the bear at a smaller scale. It was a good representation of what the bear would look like at a bigger scale. It's very interesting how it all came down together. 
first thing I did was just uh, gathered some small granite rocks from our backyard and stacked them up into a, a bear. Mm -hmm. And um, but in, in my first uh, vision of this, it, it was all it was still a, this floppy, this 200 ton floppy stone bear, floppy given that it was held together by these eye hooks. And um, I think then when we started researching and thinking seriously about it, you, you realized that it was going to have to be pinned together as well as... Um, yeah, the, the, the uh, idea of just holding these rocks together with, uh, with eyes might have been you know, structurally possible. In other words, you could dangle the, the arm rock, say, from the body rock mm -hmm. with a giant steel eye, but if it were to start shaking around, in an earthquake, it really wouldn't be possible. Yeah. It really wouldn't be a good idea to have these uh, sort of uh, arms uh, 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 rubbing and, and, and bouncing around. So, yeah, I and I remember the book that you sent that, that described your, your idea uh, and, uh, and this uh, uh, little potato man, yeah. sort of brown, uh, homely little thing that you yeah. had put together out of plaster, right? Um, and that was what we showed to the Stewart Collection Advisory Committee, and, and they were really supportive. And, and the consensus that came from them and all of us, I think, was that it should be as big as it could possibly be, that the bigger the better. Yeah, I think in the um, proposal, I, I, the first drawing showed it maybe a, a, like a 10 or 12 foot high right. there, and then and there was the intermediate, the, the mama bear, which was maybe 18 feet, and then the last bear, which I wasn't, uh, I didn't really think was possible, was probably 20 or 30 feet, and there, it had a mountain climber. You had superimposed a, a mountain climber, sort of halfway right. up it, and and that was probably even a bigger bear than we ended up. I th yeah, I think so. Ended up with. But that would have been We ended up with a very big one. We ended up with one that was actually bigger than we thought. I think 18 feet was the. It was what we thought would be. The height we were sort of aiming at. And which would have been great, but we ended up with 23 feet, 23 much better. Feet, yeah. For Tim, it's much more than rocks put together. For him, it means much more. The rock symbolizes the nature of the earth, and that's what makes it so special. I think that's, um, that's kind of key. Yeah, that even though the idea is very simple and the idea is something that you can almost sort of tell somebody about and and they can go ahead and do it um, they can't go ahead and do it because the rocks are so unique mm -hmm. right the rocks and I think you said this at one point uh, you in looking for a rock to make a teddy bear uh, are looking for a rock that is a certain kind of oval shape and no rock is going to tend to be that perfect oval shape. And I think you said at one point, well, this is probably what is going to make this interesting, what's going to make it good is the ways in which these rocks are sort of disobeying uh, this desire to be, you know, nice mm -hmm. ovals. Yeah, that's... Um, so there's an arm that's too long and, and too square, and there's, you know, they're, they're all kind of wrong in some way, but that's what really gives it character. Right? Exactly. And that's what you're able to exploit when you're putting it together. So you could take this thing and put it together, um, you know, a dozen times. We hope you don't, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you could you could take this idea and do it a thousand times, and it would be each time it would be different mm -hmm. right? because of the nature of these rocks, because of the natural, because it's nature or chance or something like it's, that. Yeah, right? it's, um, the trees particularly changed it. Um, they have a strange effect on the the reading of the scale. Because y y you generally know the size of these trees, and and then um, they have kind of a, a to me a surreal effect on on the scale of the bear. It's almost like you're looking at an H O train model set or something. Because the trees are miniaturized in the presence of the bear. Yeah, they seem to be. I guess. Uh huh. Um, I don't know if that if it had that effect on you when when the trees first. Yeah, I was. I Went found up. the trees a bit disconcerting at first, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure why. Uh, I I found that the whole, you know, finishing out of the space. I liked it a lot in the dirt, just mm -hmm. sitting there, uh, because it was so blunt and. Uh, and that's and, uh, how we were used to seeing these yeah, rocks in the dirt. Yeah. Um. Much more. 
It was a dream come true for Tim. It all began from a bunch of rocks put together in his backyard. The process of building the bear was just as good as the outcome. The students will now see a 23-foot bear walk into class. They can go sit or lay around the bear, and many will study while doing so. Remember, not only do you see rocks in the bear, but you also see Mother Nature herself. For my artwork, I decided to use materials to express how I feel about it. Don't get me wrong, I love teddy bears, but this project really made me hate them. Therefore, I decided to use toilet paper. I rolled a bunch of toilet paper balls and put them together to form a teddy bear. I used tape to put everything together without making anything fall. After putting everything together, I had to continuously squish the ball so it would form a shape. The hardest part was probably the head. Next, I decided to melt chocolate to make it look like, um, you know. I used my finger to rub it all over the bear. Personally, it was really fun to make. It looks like the actual bear from Tim Hawkinson, but made it out of something different with a different approach. Ah!